Um, so thank you, and maybe he's hiding back in his beard. So thank God so much um, for your support. And the Karambi Event Center will be hosting many workshops and performance. And we are so happy. Uh, we love to recognize Pastor John Milton, who will also be speaking later this evening, and the Congregation of the Imani Temple. Uh, so much for your cooperation and collaboration with us on this project. Um, and then thank you also to AOC and the Radical Reporters who are here tonight who will be documenting the project. So, thank you so much. So finally, I'd like to introduce um, Alex Cohen and Johnson, who's going to be doing our workshops and uh, performance series. And Cohen Soul Johnson is the founder of Lyrically Find. Uh, she's a teaching artist and has worked with youth throughout Acadia, including at the Lafayette Parish Juvenile Detention Home. So Eyes of the Sun, which is a piece that she created with uh, children in the detention home, is currently being um, put on, on two murals in town and in the community. So the words of those children will be acted out in the community. Uh, and Alex Poetic Soul Johnson is also the winner of the 2008 Icon Rising Star Award. And her album, Scattered Thoughts, is available here this evening in the bookstore. Um, it's also available on iTunes and other outlets. So, thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Art Museum, for, for facilitating this amazing experience. I think this is truly a, a dynamic exhibit, you know, that we are able to come forward and talk about this, you know, and then they ask me to help talk about this. So I, I have a bit in store for us today because I feel that it's important to experience things because sometimes we don't understand things or care until we experience it, until we immerse ourselves in that culture, in that, that thought process or whatever it may be, right? So I wanted to start because we are, are, are shedding light on, on the 13th Amendment and the language used in the 13th Amendment. Um, it says, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to, to their jurisdiction. I'm going to read that again. And before I read it, raise your hand if you knew that. Okay. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Say that slavery has not been abolished. It has been transformed. We have new, a new style. So I have another question because, and also um, I think it's important that we read our constitution because I find that many, many people in, in our nation are, are supportive of our nation without knowing in fact what they are supporting. Even in high school when we are told in class in history to read the Constitution, raise your hand if you went through that lesson and actually did it, <laughs> and actually studied it, or did you just skim through? Did you actually get the highlighter and, and work with it? Raise your hand if you've read the Constitution. Now you've read it, raise your hand if you study it. Because there's a difference between reading and studying. Raise your hand if you knew there was a prison in Baton Rouge prior to a vote. Raise your hand if you knew that the prison in Baton Rouge paid for a vote. There are so many things that we do not know, that we are uneducated of, and we should be, so that we can make the most efficient and responsible decision. So now, I want again for you to realize that I want you to feel immersed in what's about to happen. I want you to feel. So can we press play on this, please? The song that we play for the beginning of the night was played for captives of war being sold into slavery. When they were being loaded onto the ships, they heard the song. And I, I, 
I must thank Cedric Watson, Creole musician. Um, he has an African board banjo and an African fiddle made for the board, and he used both of these traditional instruments to play this traditional song. So we are going to have an auction, and you will decide who goes free or not. I want you to think about why do they deserve to be free? Why don't you choose them? Is it really worth your time to even think about it? There are people in our nation that go through this every day, fighting for their own freedom, whether they are guilty of the crime or not. Are you ready? the home. 
Not just a bunch of rednecks on the power of the clock and screaming black lives matter because that's something you stop. Yes, ma'am. Every word, every word that comes out of your mouth is true. Now and forever. Nothing you say will ever, ever matter. Do you think we will let you leave here? Even if we allow you to go on vacation, you'll be back. Oh. Is it my blackness that frightens you? Or is it the fact that I come from kings and queens intimidating you, whatever it is? I will never apologize for being black. No matter how many times you want to be accused and lock us up like wild animals. No matter how many times you blood us down like tough friends. No matter how many times you look down on us physically and intellectually, I will never apologize. For embracing what I am. And what I am is the product of my ancestors. And what I am is the product of my ancestors. And what I am is the product of hundreds of years of my ancestors being enslaved. I said it. Is it my blackness that are you really? Is it my blackness that frightens you? Or is it my greatness that you? Or are you afraid of my greatness? It does not matter if you think. Yes, you have. Me against Yes, you want to say. Good. Even though you may think, you have to be physically changing right now. You will never, I said you will never, break my soul. And that's something I can guarantee.
Before we change the laws and move into prison reform, let us first raise the value or the cost of probation supervision from $60 to $75. Therefore, when we cut the prison system, the prison time short, and we give them more time on paper, they'll be paying us for everything paid for them. To be housed, to be fed, to be clothed. Some government doesn't even go on for admission for air conditioning is in the prison nowadays. Prison reform. This brother did these exhibits over the last 30 years. <coughs> All right, John Milton has been a lawyer this year, 30 years. So every picture here is something I might have seen as I represented criminals. Maybe during my first seven years as a prosecutor here in Lafayette Parish. That's right, I sat on the 6th floor, downtown, off Buchanan, 800 Buchanan Street, a drug prosecutor. Part of the system. Big man around town. You know what I'm saying? A little prosecutor. He can set you free or he can put you in there. I remember watching TV when President Bill Clinton was pushing to put 100,000 new police officers on the streets of America. That was part of the plan to see bring Jan Reno, our Attorney General, from Miami Dade County to Washington, D.C. But we would change the notion of drugs being criminalized to of drug courts and look at the health factors of the drug work law. And then at the same time, this notion that not all communities are alike in America. There's a diversity of people, there's a diversity of processes, diversity of neighborhoods. So we're going to move toward community policing, bringing back the notion, the idea of a police officer walking his beat. Well, he knows every single person on the street. And when little Johnny, the little Bobby is doing the wrong thing, he doesn't go run through him in the slammer. He's only 16 years old. You call his mama. You call his daddy. And if he does it at school, we'll take care of that. That was a notion of like, have our system gone mad? How can we be the land of the free and yet be the most heavily incarcerated nation in the world? Let alone black people in Louisiana being the state that's the most heavily incarcerated state in the nation that's the most heavily incarcerated nation in the world. And yet maintain the notion that we are the land of the free. I remember sitting in Alexandria. They had just passed through the legislature, and every legislative session, I can almost tell you it was all designed to promote mass incarceration. It's going to be pushed by the District Attorney's Association, the Sheriff's Association, or the Chief of Police Association, even now the city marshals. They all come in and say, how can we get around these constitutional rights that protect the liberty of the citizens of America. So they said, hmm, lottery. Let's pass this anti lottery law. You know what they did it in California. So we ran through the end, we pushed through our state legislation, our state legislature. And it passed. I was a prosecutor on the sixth floor. And I'm thinking, now. Surely, any time you can stop them, they'll have no excuse because if they're loitering, loitering around, now the anti-loitering law says you can stop them, frisk them, search them, and then surely you'll find something on them. <coughs> You're sitting in the meeting at the end, baby. Governor's advisor, the governor's uh, legal advisor comes in. I won't call no name, but you can figure it out in 1996. And they said to me, they said to all of us, 100 prosecutors in the room, look guys, the government studies the neck out for this. 
and we finally got it passed, anti-mortar law. This law can be used to get your would-be rapists and murders off the street before they do anything. Wow. You need to use it, because by the way, you know it's been held unconstitutional in California. It'll take four or five years before it gets through the Supreme Court, though, so we got a little time to use it. I'm not talking about 400 years ago, 200 years ago. I'm talking about 15 years ago. <coughs> or I go over to Bill Black. You know, Paul's going to pass a saggy pants law. Thanks, well, why don't you pass a saggy bikini law up in Miami? That's indecency. I don't want to see nobody's butt either, but that's not a reason to stop it, brother. And put him in there to shake him down and see if he got any dope in his pocket. No, I don't want anybody walking around with dope in that pocket, but it's about the rights that the government of America says that I have. So when I was trained to be a prosecutor, I go to San Francisco, government experience. The professor says, Why do you think there's such a disproportionate number of black? Blacks in, in the prison system disproportionately. I want to raise that hand. Do you think it could be because of the fact that you disproportionately <coughs> use your investigatory assets upon a certain group of people in the community? In other words, if I take eighty percent of my assets and target the thirteen or twenty percent of the people population that's black, who do you think is going to fill the prison system? And sure enough, I come back to the man and exactly what they said. I was mentoring our college unit for doing exactly what they said. They call them uh, high drug zones. Because they're high drug zones, I'm talking about Truman, Fightingville, Macomb, huh? These days. <laughs> Those are the people we got to take off the street. But yeah, I go on a night ride and I end up in cowboys and everybody passing around pills. I'm like, copy something. Disproportionately, the, the wrong that is occasioned African Americans by use of our criminal justice system, our criminal justice laws, is not something that was dealt with in 1954 with the, with the, with the Brown case. What the Supreme Court says, all the wrong that the kids and black people, you need to fix it by affirmative action, by all deliberate speed. Now, states come up with a plan. Give me a break. Listen to me, my fellow citizens. If you want to live in a more just and equitable society, it can't be based upon action taken to protect the public fits and save money from the prison system that's costing us too much money. We all knew by government agenda privatizing the prison system. What do you think is going to happen? Yes. Incentivizing, incentivizing the prison systems. We know what's happening in our schools. The so-called school of the prison pipeline. We ought to be marching in the streets. We ought, to, we, ought, we ought to be screaming at the top of our voices for justice. But I don't know. It just seems like a popular phrase right now. I don't know if you're going to be free. I'm not sure if somebody's going to set you free. And I'm not sure, young brother, if you're running, is this going to be enough to outpace the system that's designed to capture, oppress, and deny you? <coughs> but I do say that I believe that there are good people in this society. And I do believe that God has ordained America to be better than it is. <coughs> and despite the beauty of the art, Yes. What could this brother have been? 
What could he have contributed? No, I say keep on. Keep on with your poetry. Let the song continue to ring in your heart. A song of hope. A rhythm that can't be denied. Because I believe
Like the front of the bed of a devil? Yeah. <laughs> All right.